Good to have you back at the old Yankee Stadium. Bob Lorenz and Michael K. back with you, along with the man of the hour. And I guess if you do the math on your contract, it'd be like the next 800 hours or 800,000 hours or something, Mark Teixeira. Congratulations. Michael mentioned the fact that you look genuinely happy, beaming almost to be up there. What does this moment mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. You know, uh, when you, you think of baseball, you think of the Yankees, or I always did growing up. And uh, to be a part of this organization and, and hopefully bring a, a World Series back to, to New York, that's, that's my goal, and it's everyone's goal here in New York, and I'm excited about it. Uh, let, let's play over exactly how this happened, Mark. Obviously, there are a lot of teams that wanted you, and the, and the ones that we knew the most about, the Angels really wanted you back. Artie Moreno, the owner, said, that's the guy I want. He's my guy. The Red Sox wanted you as well. Maybe there were other teams. And we didn't hear that much about the Yankees. Then all of a sudden, the Yankees announced they've signed Mark Teixeira. How did it break down? Well, we had been in touch with the Yankees the entire time. Uh, I think Cash does a great job of, of kind of keeping quiet, and, and Cash knows uh, what he's doing out there. And, you know, a lot of other teams uh, were, were a little bit more vocal, maybe a little bit more in the press about it. But Cash just kept quiet, and, and we had dialogues uh, consistently for two months. And when it came down to me making a decision uh, and the Yankees were there with the contract, it was a no-brainer for me. Now, listen, the Red Sox made a recruiting trip of their own. They came down to see you. Was there something about not a good fit with them? Some people think it's the history with 90. The fact that they said they were going to draft you and didn't, and you dropped on the board. What was not the right fit with the Red Sox? Well, you know, first of all, the uh, Theo Epstein and and the whole Red Sox organization, uh, they were great during this entire process. And uh, you know, I know Terry Francona. He's a, he's a great manager. He's a good man. And um, you know, it was tough to say no to those guys. But at the same time, for my family, uh, for my career, I just I just felt New York was a better fit. It was nothing against the Red Sox. Uh, it just happened that you know between the contract and and the the proximity to my family's home here on the East Coast, uh, the Yankees were perfect. Now, right, so obviously the Michael, pro real quickly, pop quiz for you then. Did you do within 50 miles, how far is it from your folks home to the Bronx? Oh, <laughs> I would probably say... Uh, 290 miles. Wow, that's pretty close. It's 220. You're close enough, though. You'll, you'll get a parting <laughs> gift at the end of the, the right. interview. Now, if proximity, Mark, played a big role, obviously the Angels had a lot going against them. They're 3,000 miles away. But I know that you really enjoyed your time there. And when you got traded there, you had a great, great couple of months. How tough was it to leave that team? It's very tough. You know, it's uh, there are so many places that I've played that I've loved. I, I love playing in Texas. I love playing in Atlanta. I love playing in L.A. And I, I, I met, met some great people. I had some great teammates. But, um, you know, when, when you talk about your family and what's important to you. My wife's family lives in Atlanta. My family lives in Baltimore. I have a sister that lives here in New York. Uh, it just made more sense for me to be in New York, and uh, I wish the guys uh, in L.A. the best, but for me and my family, the Yankees were a much better fit. Now, one of the things that a lot of people are worried about is that when you look at the, the arc of your career, you always have good seasons, but you start off poorly. Now, number one, why do you do that? Number two, Tino Martinez went through the same thing, and the first, first month here was very tough. Are you worried about that? No, I'm never worried about it because, uh, you know, I trust that my, my commitment and my preparation uh, will put me where I need to be at the end of the season. I always work very hard in, in the offseason and spring training uh, and then also being a switch hitter. I think it just kind of tends to I tend to start slower because I'm still, uh, you know, I'm still working out. I'm, I'm still putting in a lot of time in the cage trying to get both swings right. I have to put twice as much time in the cage. And you know, so April 1st, you know, my swing may not be exactly where I need to be, but I get better as the year goes on. And, and I know, uh, you know, in September and October when uh, the team needs me the most, I'm going to be uh, as good as anybody in baseball. Now, you started switch hitting at about the age of 13. Is that correct? Yes. What was the reason for that? My dad. Uh, I got I to give my dad props on that one. He, he told me that, you know, if I wanted to be a good baseball player and, and maybe make it to the next level, that, hey, try to switch hit. You know, you're such a good uh, right-handed hitter right now and see if you can do it. And I always messed around with it growing up and uh, I stuck with it and it's, uh, it's worked out pretty well for me. We talked about a little bit about the history with the Red Sox and the way things shake down. In 98, you had a chance to, to maybe be drafted. You were drafted, but you decided to go to Georgia Tech. Does it ever surprise you kind of the, the journey of life, how had you not gone there, and you've called them the three best years of your life, you may not have played college ball, you may have been drafted or gone to a different team, you may not have met your wife. I mean, it's now you're with the Yankees and everything's good. Oh, yeah. Everything happens in a, for a reason, and uh, you know the decision to go to college was the best decision I ever made uh, in my life because I met my wife, and uh, you know I started my career you know three years ahead, I think, of a lot of guys that don't go to college. And you know, now I'm here in New York, and uh, you know one thing I just hoped for this entire process that this decision would be clear. It'd be an easy decision. And when it came down, this was a very easy decision for me. Yeah, but I heard that not getting 23 was almost a deal breaker, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, uh, I I respect the Yankees so much, and, and it's tough to pick out a number because so many are retired. <laughs> but, um, you know, 25 was a, was a good number for me, and I, I wore it in, in Anaheim, and it worked out pretty well for me. So uh, having 23 stay in Monument Park, I have no problem with that. Few, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations, Mark. A few years from now, the guys are just going to be choosing in the 80s, I think, for numbers. <laughs> but we'll see. Mark, again, congratulations.